Hey everyone, hope you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, today we're gonna do our commodities update, do some technical analysis, and I'll give you my financial opinion. Uh, we'll look at the whole gamut of commodities, at least the ones that I follow, and I'll, uh, I'll give you my opinion here. So let's dive right in. Uh, we've got the dollar, the DXY. Yeah, it's a relative index. Uh, diving lower today, uh, it is still continuing to head lower the past three trading sessions. Is this the top where it really starts to lose itself to the downside? That is unknown, but short term wise, it is pulling back. It hit its head on this resistance line coming up here, and we're still within that larger uh, ascending channel. Looking at the 10 year yield, uh, the 10-year yield continues to climb higher. It looks pretty bullish here, like we might try to break out of this resistance line that goes across. That resistance line is a multi-year uh, trend line here. We played with it last time. We came back below it, and it looks like we're consolidating here and going to take another run at that trend line to the upside. And we'll see if that if that can break out. If it doesn't break out, we could see a move on uh, lower. Uh, we do have a pattern here that looks like it's it's basically doing kind of a head and shoulder type pattern here uh, if it doesn't break. Uh, so that could be a, a more of a topping pattern. So is this inflationary? If the answer is yes, we go higher. If people think that it's deflationary, we should see this uh, head lower for a recessionary, I should say disinflation or deflation, more of a recessionary fear in this market. And that's kind of the the point that we're at right now is it's a, de uh, a decision point. Are we going up or are we going down? Uh, looking at uh, the CRB index, we're getting a little bloody nose here. That's usually a continuation pattern higher. Uh, the sellers are not selling this thing off. Uh, if this turns on up and starts moving higher, I would say that 10 year yields will follow with it to the upside, that it's an inflationary uh, move higher, and that the recessionary fears are behind us. Again, we have to see what the markets are going to tell us. And right now, we don't have a clear answer. We do have a broken downtrend line that has broken to the upside. That is a positive, and it does look like it wants to go higher, at least from a candlestick perspective. Gold moving sideways, even though we had a lower dollar. Uh, we had that increasing 10-year yield. Uh, sometimes this thing gives us mixed signals. I do think this is going to re reverse and move on higher if we have that inflationary pressure. Uh, so I think it's stuck between a recessionary fears and inflation that is currently happen happening, but the expectations out forward are, little, are a little more murky, we'll, we'll call it. And right now, gold has pulled on back with those recessionary fears, but I think it's confused on, on the next steps and where to go next. Silver getting a little bit more buying pressure. Again, we, I'd like to see more buying pressure out of this. This is basically a flat day. Uh, we are up against a longer term support line. Uh, that's that white line right there that we've bounced off of quite a bit. Platinum being the strongest of the group, this is favorable for platinum. Uh, when platinum outperforms the other metals, it means that there's still inflationary uh, fears out in the market. When inflation is more prevalent, platinum outperforms the other metals. Platinum looks like it wants to outperform the other metals on all of the ratio perspectives. One, it's cheap. Two, it looks like it wants to outperform given the patterns that are in there. This pattern looks bullish to me like it wants to go higher uh, with some time. The XEU to gold ratio, uh, it is hanging out. It's trying to make its way higher. Uh, we just haven't broken the downtrend yet. Uh, that doesn't mean that we're out, out, you know, out of the count. We are right there trying to break it. And at any second, we could break this and start moving higher, uh, which means that the gold and silver mining companies will start to outperform the metals themselves. Uh, we are in a long-term bear market for the precious metals miners against gold, and we need to break this downtrend line. That is what needs to happen. Uh, GDX on the short term, it is getting some buying pressure up 1.2%. And we're still in this downtrend movement. The momentum is still strongly to the downside, but that could change at any point here. SILJ, same situation as GDX. Momentum's down, but we need to get some buying pressure in here to change that momentum. Uh, once the momentum changes, we can get we can gain some good momentum to the upside if the recessionary fears fade, the inflation comes, and people uh, are feeling a little bit better 
uh, sentiment-wise towards gold and silver and the mining companies. But there are some bright spots in the sectors that are starting to look good. Uh, crude oil heading higher today. Uh, again, this is still looking firm. Um, I'd still like to see a little bit more strength in it. Uh, let me type in crude oil. So this is crude oil futures doing it this way. We're up 2.16%. Uh, and we are trying to break this downtrend here. And we're, we're playing with that line right now. If we can close above it tomorrow with a nice strong update, I'd say uh, we're in the clear and we're probably heading higher. Uh, more of a flag type pattern uh, that has developed in crude oil. Uh, I know a lot of people are afraid with recessionary fears out there. But uh, those, if those fears fade, we'll see it in the oil markets and we'll start heading higher uh, in oil. Uh, natural gas didn't fare as well, but it wasn't a total loss, just a small down day. We call it a bloody nose, bloody forehead, something like that, uh, which is a continuation pattern to the upside, potentially. Uh, XOP, yeah, you know me. This thing is rocketing higher. Uh, nice, strong finish. Nice, bullish engulfing. Uh, that looks great. Uh, if you guys are part of the Platinum membership on the website, definitely check it out. I've got a lot of good picks on there. I show you the the strength of a lot of the companies and the ones that are my favorites on the website. Uh, I did a video on it. You can look at the last question and answer session. I was talking a lot about this and the potential bottoming that we could be getting here um, right now. So a lot of good, lot of good picks over there in, in those companies. Uh, Energy Service also has a lot of good picks. It is starting to firm up. We're getting nice buying pressure today, nice strong finish. I think if oil can close tomorrow a little bit higher, uh, I think these are, we've got a very good entry point for a lot of the energy service companies and a lot of the oil and ex, uh, exploration and production companies. Check out the website if you want to see what I like and my favorite companies. Uh, looking at uranium, uranium's also doing well as it's following the overall markets of the S&P 500 and NASDAQ composite. We've broken this downtrend line on the Sprott Physical Uranium Trust. Now, it doesn't mean that we'll just rocket higher. I mean, we could rocket higher, but we could get a little bit stuck through here. We could bang our head, come back, and then and then break. Uh, that is called a retest or a back test. Uh, and it is possible that these don't even come. They, they, they can just rocket higher, hit its head on this resistance line, pull back a little bit, and then break, break on higher. Very similar to what we did here. But uh, we've broken out of the downtrend line. It looks good. It looks favorable. Uh, I'm looking, this is looking a lot more positive than what it has in the past. Uh, URNM has broken through this resistance support line. It's used it as support. We had the bullish engulfing down here. Uh, as you know, with some of the um, question and answer sessions, you know, some down, sometimes down in these general vicinities, I like to start to buy. Uh, we are starting to play with a broken down trend line. Uh, we're breaking out now. This looks good here, guys. We had a nice strong day, nice strong finish. Let's hope the momentum can continue. Uh, but it's looking a lot better than what it was. Scrolling on down, uh, Tan also getting a little bit of buying pressure. Again, this thing is really starting to, to firm up here. And, you know, I'm not anti Tan, but, you know, I've got a teeny bit of money in it. But it looks like it's trying to firm up, wanting to break to the upside. I don't have a large stake in this. I do not, you know, I, I don't have much in this. So if, if you guys are looking to see what I'm doing, uh, I don't own much in it. But it does look like it's looking a little bit better versus some of the other companies. And some of the companies themselves are looking a little bit better as well. COPX, uh, getting more buying pressure today. We're getting buying pressure across the board. Uh, we do have a downtrend line that was broken yesterday, and now we're starting to move higher. That is positive. The recessionary fears could be waning here where commodities start to bottom out, and we could see a big move higher if the wave two is complete. So we had wave one, wave two is the pullback. We don't know the size of the pullback necessarily, and we could be starting another large wave. Uh, so that looks good there. The Coming on down, I'm not going to go through the ratios. REMX is also starting to firm up. This was a false breakdown with a nice big bullish engulfing. 
Now we're starting to move on higher. Let's see if that momentum can continue. Uh, I think it will. Looking at the overall markets and looking at a lot of the commodity markets, uh, this looks really good for a move higher. Uh, lithium, lithium also firming up a little bit today, 0.76. We still haven't broken this downtrend yet. It doesn't look as good as some of the other sectors, like it might need a little bit more time. Again, though, um, lithium is in a tight market. It could very well go higher. Uh, I do have some exposure in lithium. Uh, the S&P 500 getting a lot more buying pressure, breaking through that downtrend line. This looks good for a potential move higher. It finished very strong as well. So that's looking a lot better. The U.S. Composite Index broke out, did a retest, and now we're starting to uh, move higher. We're breaking through this, making a new high. This is starting to look quite a bit better than what we've been seeing. Uh, so the S&P 500, the NASDAQ Composite, uranium, rare earth metals, it's no surprise that all of these are highly correlated and that they're starting to break to the upside. Um, could this be a bear market rally where it could potentially be a bull trap? It's possible. We have to wait and see if this is a big old bull trap that comes. A bull trap is where, if I were to zoom out, if you guys don't know what a bull trap is, uh, basically you get a very large downward movement. This here could be considered a bull trap potentially, uh, or we get a much bigger one where we come on up and then we, we pull on back much uh, farther. Um, so that could be uh, another uh, trap, uh, so, so to speak. Uh, zooming on in, we've got XHB. This is the housing home builders. Uh, this is one that we've been watching on the channel. And if we can get it, there we go. Uh, this guy has broken its downtrend and we're starting to move higher. Uh, so we are getting out of the woods here, and this is looking very positive for a move on higher. Uh, so XHB, the home builders, looking very good. Uh, and then as the sentiment changes, we might see some differences in uh, the housing starts and, and whatnot there as well. Uh, but right now, home builders are looking a lot better in terms of the index. Uh, lumber also firming up a little bit. This looks bullish to me where lumber could go higher. That is good. Uh, nickel moving sideways. Palladium, we got a couple other ones. We had some weakness in wheat. Wheat is still um, under pressure. Soybeans is still under pressure. I still need to see more buying pressure here. Lots of downside momentum. Corn still downside momentum. And uh, copper just moving sideways with a little bloody chest, bloody nose, whatever you want to call it. Um, the uh, They did update the housing starts. The housing starts were at 1.5 something million. Uh, basically flat, still above the average, is what I saw in the housing starts uh, of data released. And the permits, U.S. housing permits, were also um, basically flat. It was slightly lower than the month before, but flat for overall um, you know, purposes. It was at 1.6 something million. This was at 1.5 something million. Uh, so it's still okay. I'd like to see it be a little bit better, but it's okay to have pullbacks, especially when you've got recessionary fears. We've got interest rates that have gone up a lot in a very short period of time. The market needs time to digest all of this. Uh, coming on down, we've got Moo. Moo is our agribusiness ETF. That is rocketing higher. Uh, it's looking very good. And this is looking like it's ready to put in a bottom. It's turning around, has a nice, strong finish today. Uh, looks very good, along with a lot of the fertilizer companies. Um, all the tankers were doing very well. I saw that aluminum getting a little bit more selling pressure than the rest of the of the group. Still looks good at this support level, though, uh, for aluminum. We've got uh, the Baltic Dry Index was firm today, but the companies really uh, skyrocketed today. So that was another sector that looks really good. That's trying to put in a bottom. So overall, guys, it's looking a lot better. Uh, I like the action today. I like that the S&P 500 is breaking out to the upside. Why does that matter? Because it 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 eases the concerns of people uh, about the overall market and being dragged lower, uh, the commodities being dragged lower with the overall markets, getting in that sell everything type of event. Uh, so I'm not an anti-S&P uh, 500. I'm not anti-stocks necessarily. I just think they're out of cycle. And when the stock market moves up, our stuff should go up more and faster. That is what I'm hoping uh, with our investments. And I say hoping 
Uh, no one knows for sure. Nothing is 100%, but all of the market conditions are saying that the commodity bull market should continue, given where we are uh, with a lot of the ratios, given where we are uh, with a lot of the market conditions in terms of interest rates, in terms of an expansionary phase of real estate, in terms of all of these different metrics that I, that I look at, all these inputs. These inputs are telling me that a commodity bull market is still in progress and that we should see moves ahead of us. If you guys are interested in learning about what companies I'm playing, what the leveraged plays are, subscribe to the Platinum membership in the, in the description link below. I go over a lot of that stuff. I share a lot of that information. In fact, I'll do a video on the website so you guys can see where it's at and, and, and what it looks like, the, the uh, Platinum membership. Uh, so you guys are a little bit more um, educated on, on what I have to offer. But uh, yeah, this all looks really good. Hopefully the sentiment is turning around. It looks like we've got buyers, strong buying pressure, that things are breaking their downtrends and that an upward move could continue here. It looks really good. All right, guys, subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up if you haven't. We'll catch you next time. This is Finding Value.